Hello, I'm Michael Burhan. I'm an actor. I've been working in this industry for 15 years. And I'm doing this video today um, because it's a last resort. I am being harassed by a agent, or should I say former agent of mine, by the name of Elaine Eaglestone. I'll get into the harassment in a bit, but I need to explain why this is happening. I first signed with Elaine in April 2018, and I worked with her as a, an actor. She basically said all the right things and seemed very driven, so I thought that I could work with her in order to get my career up and running again. I, I restarted in this industry uh, in 2017 after a huge event in my life uh, left me suicidal. So acting was the thing that saved me. So once I signed with Elaine, I noticed that things were getting rather bad rather quickly. From the moment I signed with her, she stated that there's a website fee of 30 pounds for every actor to pay to have their photos on our website. I basically declined that offer and stated I have my own website, that's fine, thank you. I was then pestered every single day about the money for the website and I constantly refused and stated that I didn't want to go on the website. She kept touting how amazing it is and that the money's not for her, it's for the web developer who's developing the site. And it seemed rather shady and again I kept declining. I then figured out that the website fee was used for me to get work. That if I didn't pay it, she wouldn't have interest in putting me forward for roles. So I ended up in a situation where I wasn't getting any work. I couldn't prove it, but it seemed like a fair bet. I then signed up for a role on uh, Casting Networks and she was my agent on there. so they dealt with her after I initially got the role for myself and it was for a charity uh, internet movie kind of deal. It was like a commercial kind of thing. So I signed up for that, I got the role, everybody was happy uh, to the point where I pride myself on speaking out about certain things. And one of the things I found while being in her agency was this toxic environment that she had of Everyone must do courses in order to make themselves better actors. But you couldn't go out and find these courses on your own. You had to find them via her. You would be paying anything from 50 to 100 pounds for courses. Uh, go on to, she would talk about mocap, saying that it was the next stage in acting and how this is, we got to get on the ground up. So we got to do mocap courses. It turns out the guy she used for the mocap courses, she wanted a hundred pounds per actor for this course. Turns out these courses were like 15 pound tasters and that the guy running them was a complete scam artist. She didn't vet the guy. She didn't tell us this and the money would go through her. So we didn't know how much of that money actually went to him. I declined yet again. She would want me to attend acting classes with an acting coach that she found who, in my opinion, he directs his own stuff. He's had some work that he's put out there in festivals that have gotten some good reviews. I don't know him personally, so I can't say anything. But to me, it just seems like he, I don't work with acting coaches or acting teachers who don't, who haven't done anything successful in their career. If I'm focusing on film and TV, you want to get a coach who basically focuses on film and television and who has been successful at it with a number of TV roles or film roles who have worked on pilots who have done stuff in order to show how good they are. We can get coaches who have learned under like Meisner, Streisberg, who've learned Stanislavski and want to teach those and pass that knowledge on to other people. But when someone's trying to teach you their techniques, then you need to have someone who's rather versed at what they do. So again, I declined. And I kept declining for all these things that she tried to put me on because I just saw them as nothing but a scam. Because all you're doing is give handing your money to her. She would get the money for the courses and then she would pass on a certain amount over to these guys. So she would get like a finder's fee, so to speak. 
the biggest issue came when she made this movie called Family Matters. She gave us all the script. We had to audition for a bunch of characters and the audition was pop and circumstance. It wasn't, no one was going to get a role from these auditions. I only found this out after I auditioned. But I went to the audition anyway because I was bullied into doing it. Like most things. I was bullied into donating money towards Family Matters. Because if I didn't, I wasn't a team player. If I didn't go to the audition, I wasn't a team player. And I had to go by car all the way down from where I lived in London to Northampton. In order to basically do the audition. And it was at her house. And she was doing all these little... Um, videos and and charity runs and stuff with them i did mine where i had to be naked uh and go to the shops with nothing but a towel on and I, I you know i was playing my part i was sitting there thinking okay i've got to do this and hopefully she's going to advance my career because that's what she kept saying days and months went by and nothing more vitriol from her to other actors and to me calling me names she would say that she put me forward for a role on the uh, TV show a TV movie Brexit I then found the role on a casting website and I got it myself because uh, apparently according to her they heard nothing back she got upset about that uh, she would then put me forward uh, state that she put me forward for a role where I had to go all the way down to a panto theatre out of London at my own cost where the audition itself was going to cost me a hundred pounds I couldn't afford it so I told her I'm sorry I got to turn it down she got upset angry and swore at me um, and called me useless then came the the talking behind other actors backs an actor left the agency and she started slagging the person off and calling her a whore in a group chat with myself and other actors it got to the point where I spoke up and I kept speaking up and saying this isn't the environment I want to be a part of. But she kept lording over me saying that she would get rid of me and that if I didn't want an agent and I couldn't find another agent, I better keep my mouth shut. So again, I kept playing the game. My audition for Family Matters happened wasn't anything to write home about. It was to me it was probably the worst audition I had ever done. And the feedback I got was really, really bad as well. So there you go. I flopped. So that happened. Again, she casts people who never attended the audition, all these other people that she worked with. And most not noticeably there were people who that she favoured. Then she, in order to drum up donations, she decided that she wanted to get people to give her money. And if they donated, they would be put in a draw in order to win over her representation. For me and for others, it, this is the most insulting thing you could ever do. You know, I go in and I'm told that I need to audition for my agents and my body of work has to stand on its own. And then just give someone money, hand over your cash, and boom, you know, you're represented. I told her it was a bad idea. Again, I was told to keep my mouth shut and told what my game was. So, I let her do it. Because I couldn't stop her. No one could. And by the time I parted ways with the agency, the stage then had an article up about her talking about the fact that she was trying to pay for play with people. Which, technically, is true. So then, later on, the final, the straw that broke the camel's back, the final straw that broke the camel's back, was when I brought to her attention, because she said that she was told, first it was told on via email, then it was told via an app called Tagmin, which is a kind of an agent's app, that an actor died on set and the agent was being sued. Now, if you don't believe me, all the documentation is there in a PDF document everything. I haven't hidden anything. It's all there. So take it as you will. I asked questions because this is what you do because I googled it on my phone. I was on the way to 
from London to a different location and I was cycling so I went on my phone, googled the location and tried to find out more about the situation, nothing came up. No breaking news, nothing, not even Equity spoke about this. So I asked her point blank, can I have a screen cap? She got angry and said no and told me what my, and, and again asked me what's your game? Again I asked her I need more information because if I'm doing free work, if I'm working with other companies, no one is going to want to go through my agent to give them contracts if I'm doing free work. There are a few exceptions and she's had a few companies who are exceptions give her those contracts over. And also, quite frankly, I don't feel the need to give my contracts of stuff I get myself over to an agent that doesn't seem to be doing their job. So we spoke about this, it turned into an argument, she phoned me up and started swearing at me over the phone. And then it got to the point where I basically stated to her, I went, look, you keep going on about the fact that I'm not a team player when I've edited footage from a Kickstarter that you did for a children's movie, which quite frankly didn't come out. And she blamed the production company and said they stole the money. I edited this, the one trailer scene that she had for that, which was a proof of concept. I edited that. When the Family Manor situation happened, I offered my editing services for free. Every time an actor needed a space. It's so funny. I've had actors sit there and slag me off. People who work with her, who want to get in on the slagging off of people. I've had them here at my studio. So they could film self-tapes. So I could help them out. Totally free. Not charging anyone. Because I'm being a team player. I've edited showreels for people that have worked in the agency, haven't asked for a penny, voice reels, everything, haven't asked for a penny. And yes, I must have mug written on my forehead, and I probably do, but I saw it as me doing good for others. And I mentioned all this and stated to her, I'm trying my best to work with you because I see working with an agent as a partnership. I ignored all the scammy things that I, I sat there and just felt was wrong but I didn't say anything because obviously I couldn't prove anything. I ignored the Family Matters situation because again I couldn't prove that something seemed off. Of course even making a movie about your life story as an agent shows how she more wants the spotlight on her. She doesn't care about the people she's representing. She would make us do things like tag her on our Facebook and say thank you for everything that we've ever gotten. I felt like I was going to throw up every time I did that. Because she was acting like she was my lord and saviour. When she should be doing her job. For those who don't know, as an actor in the UK especially, you have to pay for things yourself. IMDB, Spotlight, Casting Networks. That all comes out of our own pocket. And we don't make anything back unless we land jobs from them. Then we don't get taken seriously unless we have an agent representing us. So we end up in that situation. So we have to pay for all that. We also have to pay for equity. And the, the rate kind of varies, but if you're not earning much from the industry, it's 9.99. So we get all the, these kind of things we have to pay for, and we still work and work and work, and most of the jobs we do are for free because we want to build a showreel. Then we have showreel companies come in and go, hey, we can do that for you, pay us. Or then we have to be told, oh, you need to do gun training, or you've got to do mocap courses, or you've got to do all these other courses that, to be fair, unless you're actually in a big movie, none of that matters. What matters is the visas that you have to now buy for yourself, which companies don't pay for anymore. And other costs that you have to incur, including headshots, which you have to pay for yourself. And also, if you can't edit, you need a showreel editor to edit your showreel. It all comes to expenditures. And having someone sit there and act like they're the be-all and end-all of our career is ridiculous. Now, moving on, after that debacle, she had me thrown off a charity movie. It was an internet piece that was supposed to be a trailer for something to help promote them. I think it was an internal commercial for the company. And I went to equity directly about this they then contacted the charity who distanced themselves from both me and her in regards to the situation and just said it wasn't anything to do 
with uh, what she said, even though I have an email to prove that it was, that they had to remove me due to cost cutting measures. So I left it at that. Didn't take it any further. Hoped that for the last five months that she would leave me alone. I requested my donation back from Family Matters because she asked people if anyone was unhappy and wanted their money back to call, contact her. I did that. She said, yep. And then didn't respond afterwards. Didn't give me a penny. Didn't pay me anything. Didn't even give me a refund. Because why would she? I have to prove it and I've got to go and take her to court in order to get 25 quid back. So she gets away scot free. Five months later, February the 10th, I get contacted by several casting directors and agencies I've worked with, a great guy by the name of Alex, who tells me that someone by the name of Mia has been emailing people saying that I violated my NDA on a movie I've worked on. I can't specify what those movies are because I signed an NDA. It's a non-disclosure agreement, which means I can't talk about my role, I can't talk about the movie, I can't take set photos, and all those conditions were met. Because if you have never been to Warner Studios or ever acted in Warner Studios, they take your phone from you and they put it in a safe, which has a security guard on it, and you're only allowed access to it probably about a minute a day to check your castings and stuff. That's it. You take any photos, they'll find it, you'll get booted off set and you're blacklisted. Guess what? I did a full two months there, no one blacklisted me because I didn't have my phone. I met the requirements. And I did two big movies on that set. Two big movies and never once shared a photo. So, back to that, we went on our, our situation. She basically emailed people saying I violated the NDA because I basically uh, posted photos from set and then posted a photo from my Instagram where I'm outside Warner Studios after a, I finished and wrapped on a movie, hugging a friend of mine who in Turkish I called him uncle. She gave him a fake name because that's what Elaine does. And companies got scared. People stopped working with me. I am now basically at the bottom of the pile. I can't even get extra work. All because of Elaine. And people probably ask, how do you know it's Elaine? Well, firstly, it's the way that both emails are worded. Uh, in the bottom in the PDF, you'll see there's an email that we talked about in terms of the money, the way she's spoken to me, and also the way that she's actually written that email. She has slandered me twice, once on Facebook, and then bombarded people via that email. She thought I wouldn't find out, but the thing that Elaine didn't understand is there's a thing called VPNs that mask your IP. She didn't do that. She created this IP account using her home internet. So I basically found out by checking her provider, checking her IP address, and then checking the IP address from maya.live.co.uk. It's not rocket science. It can be easily done. Even someone as stupid as me can do it. So I'm in a situation where I have to speak out. If I don't, then no one is going to know about this scam artist, this abusive and manipulative individual, who, by the way, has opened another Kickstarter for that she's funding a film that she says is going to involve her children and other people's kids. I guarantee you that the money's going to miraculously disappear again and that she's going to blame whoever she's working with again. Just like with her previous kids' movie, just like with Family Matters, just like with this one. She linked herself to an actor who is famous for a TV soap, which if you want to go to her Twitter account, go and check her out there. Nothing to do with me. I'm not going to speak on it because I don't know what happened, but within a week, that actor ends up parting ways with her and she ends up slandering her on Facebook. She is not a good person. And people like this shouldn't be in our industry. And I'm so sick and I'm so tired of trying to defend myself when she knows my deepest darkest emotional traumas because I'm the idiot that told her that when she befriended me I thought that she actually gave a shit but she wants me oh it's quite obvious she wants me to go kill myself just like my suicide in 2016 that she knows about and she talks about people not being bullies and you know everyone's a hater but the fact is she's the biggest bully of them all and I'm so sick and tired of seeing her make 
people like myself suffer because she doesn't get her way.